Heart attack is uh, one of the leading cause of death in the world. But uh, before we know what is door to balloon time, it's important to know what causes a heart attack. In heart attack, the pipes uh, which supply blood to the heart, which we call it as coronary arteries, get blocked. Whenever there is a blockage in the artery, there is no blood supply to certain portions of the heart. When we look at the internationally, the one important differentiator is the time that the patient reaches your hospital to the time you open up the artery for the first time, what we call as a door to balloon time. And standard acceptable thing is within 90 minutes. Many of the hospitals, 50% of the hospitals, even in US, have not been able to achieve a door to balloon time of less than 90 minutes. But why are we talking about it? Because when the artery is totally closed in a heart attack, the muscle is dying and sooner you open up, lesser the muscles die, more of them do recover. So when the patient reaches the ER or at times we have prior information that a patient with a heart attack is coming to the hospital, everybody is on alert. The moment the patient gets wheeled into the emergency room, the clock starts and the first thing that is, that is done once the patient reaches is, once the patient is made to lie down, we take an ECG. The ECG has to be taken within 10 minutes of the patient reaching the hospital. Once the ECG is done, immediately the, a doctor is there to interpret the ECG and a diagnosis of a heart attack or a myocardial infarction is made. The moment that is made, one group of staff and doctors would go about initiating treatment, getting IV lines, giving the initial uh, medications. The second uh, group would start talking to the patients and their relatives. We need to inform them that they've had a heart attack, tell them what a heart attack is, and that we need to do an emergency angiogram to identify where the block in the blood vessel is and initiate treatment. The moment consent is uh, got from the patient and the relatives, the cath lab is informed and they kept on alert. And the moment that is done, the patient is wheeled into the cath lab. Again, the moment the patient goes out of the cath lab, the clock is again, you know, the timing is, is monitored. When the patient reaches the cath lab, the time is again monitored. We first, we get an intra-arterial axis, we put in to put the catheter, so the, that is called the needle time. So at, when the needle goes in, we, we again you know, record the time and then the angiogram is done. The next step is once the angiogram is done, we have made a diagnosis, we know where the problem is and we, we need to know what, we know what the next step would be. So as soon as the angiogram is done, the patients are again, the patients related are again called back into the cath lab and one of the doctors who's been performing it would come out, talk to the patient's relatives, show them the angiograms and get consent for the angi angioplasty. Of course, we do have at this point of time, we need to explain to them the procedure, the risks of the procedure, the financial implications of this. All this is done at as quick as possible and the moment we get the uh, consent for this, we proceed with an angioplasty where we put a wire and open up the balloon. Once we open the balloon in the artery, the flow gets re-established and this is what is called as a door to balloon time. Once we re-establish the flow, then we have time to, you know, uh, better optimize the result. We, we, we may put a stent, may use multiple balloons, these things. But what is most important is door to balloon time. To facilitate all these, wherever we record the times, we have synchronized the clocks between the ER and the uh, cath lab. So on retrospect, we are able to exactly you know, know what time the patient came in, what time the balloon was inflated. So this is how we get, we get this door to balloon time. Uh, you have to know that D2B, uh, there's a door to balloon time of less than 90 minutes has been set uh, as the guideline by American College of Cardiology. We have been consistently able to do it at uh, average time of less than uh, 70 to 73 minutes. Uh, this is uh, uh, involving over patients of more than 300 patients every year. This process has been going on for last uh, five to six years. And uh, the most important thing to note is we have been consistently able to do it at 72 to 73 minutes over the last few years. But the important benchmark for us is we have been able to do in one patient at a door to balloon time of 11 minutes. So you can imagine that uh, where many hospitals claim that they can do a, 
uh, ECG or echo at very fast, we have been able to say that we've been able to do angioplasty by the time patient comes to the casualty to do the procedure of taking only 11 minutes, which has been uh, one of our uh, uh, major achievements. And we have to note that over the last few years, we've been able to reduce the mortality figures or what you call a death rate in patient coming uh, with a heart attack to our hospital. So this is a very important achievement and it translates into saving more muscle for the patient. Patient will go home with a more uh, normal heart function and a normal, uh, so he will be able to recover his lifestyle, he will be able to do his uh, return to his normal uh, life after a successful procedure. So the aim is to preserve or uh, have less damage to heart muscle. So a patient will go home with the minimum damage, he can resume his activity and it, it as a whole it will improve the quality of life for the patient and reduces the mortality figures.